Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Centimore, and today I'm going to read a book to you. The book is entitled Carnivores by Aaron Reynolds, and I brought a special friend along with me to help. His name is Mr. Lion. Mr. Lion happens to be a big Wildcats fan, so we really like him and appreciate that he's going to join us today. So I'm going to read the pages to you, and then I'm going to show you the pictures. Let's begin. The lion is known throughout the animal kingdom as the king of beasts. The great white shark is the most feared predator in the oceans. And the timber wolf's howl strikes terror into the hearts of fuzzy woodland creatures everywhere. But even savage carnivores get their feelings hurt. The lion tries to ignore it when the gazelles whisper behind his back. He pretends not to see the zebras looking down their noses at him. The wildebeest call him Bad Kitty just because he's eaten half the neighborhood. It hurts. It really does. The great white shark he gets such a bad rap. All those shark movies don't help. Everyone talks about his feeding frenzies, but he's simply a fast eater. Nobody understands. And the timber wolf almost never eats little girls. That little red riding hood story is very misleading. The bunny rabbits always say, Quit sneaking up on me. But he's not sneaking. He's merely a very quiet walker with vicious fangs and scary eyes. He can't help it. So it was just a matter of time before the lion, the great white shark, and the timber wolf started hanging out. Because even carnivores need to share their feelings. And their first get together, the timber wolf came up with an idea that might solve everything. We'll go vegetarian. The lion tried to enjoy his salad. The leaves and bark kept getting stuck in his razor sharp teeth. The great white shark ate nothing but seaweed for a whole day but it left a horrible kelpie aftertaste in his mouth. And the timber wolf tried his hardest to eat only berries, but every single berry bush seemed to have a bunny inside. They realized that becoming vegetarians was a silly idea in the first place. Before long, the great white shark came up with a fabulous new idea. New outfits will blend right in. At first, the lion's antelope disguise worked out terrific. Everyone treated him so nicely. But when the other antelope smelled his zebra breath, it was all over. The great white shark blended right in with the dolphins. Nobody suspected him of being bloodthirsty at all until all the dolphins disappeared. And the timber wolf kept drooling on all the other bunnies. The disguise idea was a dud, which was very frustrating, which made them all hungrier than ever. As a last resort, the lion invited the oldest and wisest carnivore he knew to come speak to the group. The great horned owl was happy to be included. What should we do? asked the lion. Everyone is mean to us, said the great white shark. I never knew what to say, said the timber wolf. The owl smiled. It used to hurt my feelings too, but now I remind myself, I'm not bad, I'm a carnivore. Eating meat is just what I do.
I'm not bad, whispered the lion. I'm a carnivore, confessed the great white shark. Eating meat is just what I do, declared the timber wolf. The wise old owl was brilliant. It turned out he was also delicious. These days, things are different. The lion doesn't dread going to the watering hole anymore. When the zebras give him nasty looks, he smiles his friendliest smile and eats them. The great white shark feels much better about gobbling up everybody in sight. He knows that he's a husky fish with a healthy appetite. When the timber wolf gets the munchies, he doesn't think twice about grabbing a handful of bunnies. They have really negative attitudes anyway. After all, they're not bad, they're carnivores. Eating meat is just what they do. And I wonder what's next on their menu. I hope you enjoy the book, boys and girls, and I wish everyone well.